You're listening to the Frequency and Flow podcast with Brie Couric, episode number 62. In this episode, I'm going to be sharing the two common causes of burnout that are impacted by your human design and how you can actually use human design to avoid burnout in your business. So let's dive in. I know I personally have dealt with burnout throughout my entire life, on and off, no matter what phase and stage of life that I've been in, but I will admit that nothing quite compares to the burnout that I've experienced as a result of building my business. I have a feeling that you might be able to relate if you're here with me right now. Um, As an entrepreneur, The truth is, is that you're building a living, breathing thing, a business. It is something that you birth. It is something that you nurture, that you grow, that you work with, you build a relationship with. It all starts from scratch and goes from there. It is a very intensive relationship in your life. And because of that, there's a lot of time, money, energy, and effort that goes on for days, weeks, months, and even sometimes years before that investment of time and energy and effort and money actually starts to pay off. So I will say, I've talked about this at length in earlier episodes of my podcast, but there have been at least a few waves of time where I've gone through burnout in my business. And while I've learned how to manage it better and better over the years, I have almost come to see it as a little bit of like a devil on my shoulder or something hovering over me, taunting me, teasing me, and just waiting for me to drop my guard so that that burnout can just step in and take over. Like I said, I know that I am not alone here. If you're listening to this, you've probably experienced this at least once, if not more, in your own journey. And even if you're not in it right now, you're probably living in fear of it because you know just how devastating burnout can be. It can make you question something that you used to love and really be passionate about. It can zap all the motivation that you had. It can make, like I know through my own experience, it almost sometimes makes me cynical about things in my business or what I'm seeing or what I'm experiencing. Um, It definitely brings out that not self of bitterness for me, um, but it also brings out a lot of other negative emotions too that are hard to like compare or to bring back together with what I want to be experiencing my business or what I used to be experiencing my business. So this is a very common topic. Actually, when I work with clients, most of the clients that I speak to have a fear of burnout or they're coming out of burnout or they're scared that they're at the point where they're like teetering into it. I I think almost every single person I've talked to and worked with either as an OBM or through coaching or whatever, they've all dealt with it or are dealing with it at some point. This is a very common problem. So I just want you to know that if you're here at this moment, It's very common, very, very common. And so there's actually a lot of things that can contribute to burnout, like a lot of things, more than I could ever talk about or quantify. And there's a lot of different ways that it can actually be experienced. Um, Some people experience burnout. Like I said, they lose their motivation. Some people kind of go into hyperdrive. It's a very personal experience of what burnout actually is and how it's experienced and what causes it. And There's no way I could ever cover that all. So today I'm really just going to be speaking through the lens of entrepreneurial burnout and then through that lens of human design and what contributes to it. So I'm taking a very narrow scope. This is quite a broad discussion. I could probably talk about it for hours, but um, (laughs) let's just dive into it. Um, So there's, if you think about it, there's actually two reasons that we as people experience burnout. The first reason is that we are committing to do too much. This is a very common thing. I think often, especially with women, we are overcommitted to our families, to our careers, to our friends, to ourselves, like trying to take care of ourselves. 
you're committed to too much. And when you're committed to too much, that is a reason that you can experience burnout. And the other big reason that you can experience burnout is when we don't give ourselves enough time to complete all of the things that we've committed ourselves to. So those two things, they definitely play with each other, but it's two different things, right? Committing to do too much means your to-do list is way too full. And then you're also putting yourself on a short timeline to get all those things done. So it's trying to fit too much in too little time. And when you boil down all of the reasons of burnout, I they pretty much just boil down to those two reasons. Um, I mean, of course, there's nuance to those and nuance to the way that that might look in your life, but basically that's the reason why. And funny enough, these two reasons map directly back to two human design centers specifically. I think it's really funny when the answers that we seek outside of human design align really well with human design, and I think this is definitely a case of that. So when in the situation, the first reason, when we're committed or you're committed to do too much, you can actually thank your ego center or also known as your will center or your heart center for that one. Your ego center, the funny thing is most people have this undefined and your will center or your ego center, it kind of speaks for itself a little bit, but it represents your desires, it represents your willpower, it represents your, your ability to commit to things. And when you have this will center defined, What tends to happen or what can happen is that because if you're defined, it is almost easier for you to commit to things long term to get your, you know, to really get behind things for the long term that you believe in. And so where burnout happens is when other people aren't living up to your own expectations of commitment and consistency. And so you put extra stress on yourself trying to motivate others to get them to be as consistent and committed as you are. So you almost go into overdrive trying to drag other people with you if you have a defined will center or ego center, heart center, all the same thing. If you happen to have this ego center, will center undefined, which like I said, is the majority of the population, myself included, what happens to contribute to the feeling of burnout that we're feeling is when we ourselves want to so badly to be committed and to be consistent, but we just are not designed to be that way. I mean, I think of this, this comes all the time. You know, I talked about this, I think a couple weeks ago in a podcast episode, the last uh, episode of The Current, where I was like, I was really consistent with my marketing content for a long time. And when I fell off that consistency, which is what I'm define like what my design is it was really heartbreaking it really just made me frustrated I tried so hard to stay consistent but life got in the way and like that like trying to force it so hard that's what causes the burnout and so either you know if you have this defined you're you know you burn out trying to get others to be at the level of commitment and consistency and willpower that you have where it almost feels like you know you're like why can't other people do this you know and that frustration with the world outside of you is what causes the burnout whereas if you have the center undefined it's yourself feeling like you can't keep up that causes the burnout so the other center that contributes to burnout or the other reason is when you put yourself on these unrealistic timelines to get that said work done, that to-do list. And when that happens, you can thank your root center. So when you have your root center defined, there's actually about a 50-50 split in this. I personally have my root center defined. And when you have your root center defined, what contributes to that feeling of burnout you know, the root center is all about taking action. It's about personal growth. It's about evolution. And it's about having a level of consistency or drive behind that. If you have it defined, the root center is all about time. Like it really is your relationship to time and how things evolve or change over time for you personally. And so when you have this defined, you know, for you working on timelines and working, you know, like the motivation and drive to grow and evolve is already there for you. So what causes burnout of, you know, having unrealistic timelines or putting time to the things that you need to get done is when other people outside of yourself can't meet 
the deadlines that you put on them or that you need them to have, um, or when other people procrastinate, which in turn comes back and delays what you need to do also. Um, when other people from our perception can't live up to our standards of accountability and then we end up getting caught up and feeling late and feeling behind because we're letting outside impact us. We stress ourselves out over a lot of those small things and the timing, and we're stressing ourselves out over things that ultimately we can't control. And I relate to this a lot. I'm almost getting impassioned talking about it because yes, I work great when I can just work in my own little bubble, but I know as soon as I have to work with other people all around me. That's when things start to get, you know, that's when I start to stress myself out and that's when I start to get really burnt out. So on the flip side, if you have your root center undefined or open, right, you don't necessarily have that inner motivation to consistently grow and evolve and, you know, stay on timelines, right? And, but that's how you're designed. It's a beautiful thing. It sounds like a bad thing, but it's definitely not. You work at your, on your own divine timing and that's beautiful. And when you have that root center undefined, you yourself want so badly to be better about managing your time and not waiting till the last minute and not procrastinating. But the truth is, is that because you have the center undefined, you have to operate on your own timing and your own cycles as best as you can. Now, I know we live in a world where that's not always possible and it's not even mostly possible, but doing the best you can to take your time when you can take your time and working as best you can in a space where ideally you don't have to worry about timelines and that urgency that other people are putting onto you. Feeling that pressure that other people put onto you, that is what causes burnout or letting that pressure, like not just feeling it, but letting it impact you, that's what causes burnout. Now that I've talked about those two centers, can you see now that no matter whether you are defined or undefined in these centers, that they can influence not just what you do, but your work and your business as a whole and how you experience burnout and how burnout can rear its ugly head <laughs> on your work and your business and your life and ev relationships and everything in between. So yes, the reason that you experience burnout might be different or the factors contributing to the burnout might be different, but in the end, the result is burnout if you're not managing it properly. So it really makes sense to understand how you're designed to operate and know that either, you know, if you have one of those two centers defined, you're letting external factors influence your own process. And that's leading to, you know, it's like, are you looking outside of yourself? Are you letting the external impact the internal? And that kind of goes both ways, but just knowing what how you're feeling that pressure and responding in the way that you're designed to is how you can avoid burnout. One of the trickiest things about burnout is that we honestly don't often recognize that it's impacting us until it's too late. And I am raising my hand here. This definitely is what has happened to me every single time I've experienced burnout is that I'm already digging my hole like 10 feet deep before I realize how burnt out I am. So is there anything that we can do to prevent it? or at least become more aware of it before we're dragging ourselves across the floor and to our computers to be able to continue moving forward. Of course, there's a lot of practical things that you can do. And that's, I mean, there's a lot that I have in my own practice. I wouldn't call myself necessarily an expert here, but there's a lot you can do. I mean, you could probably Google it. There's a lot of practical things. Um, but the really cool thing is, and the reason I'm saying that, like bringing this up now is that your human design can actually help with this. And again, that's what I'm gonna focus on here. You've heard, I'm sure if you're here, you've heard of your human design types. Um, the signature and the not self. So, you know, as a as a generator and manifesting generator, your signature is satisfaction and your not self is frustration. As a projector, your signature is success and your not self is bitterness. As a reflector, your signature is surprise and your not self is disappointment. And as a manifester, your signature 
is peace and your uh, not self is frustration. I just rattled those off, so I hope I got them right. <laughs> but, um, but if you've been following me for a while now, that you know that I've referred to the signature and the not self as your alignment cues. You're supposed to follow your signature and evolve and improve or iterate through your not self. But to be truthful with you um, and transparent, I've actually over the past few months specifically developed a new perspective. And quite frankly, it's kind of a hot take on the actual harm that you might be doing to yourself if you're chasing your signature all the time. Because burnout exists at the extremes. So the not self connection and relation to burnout is really obvious. I don't think I need to explain that. It's really straightforward. You know, for example, for me as a projector, that prolonged bitterness is of course going to lead to burnout. I talk about this at length um, in multiple podcast episodes, my personal experience with it. But here's where the hot take comes in. (laughs) If you're chasing your signature nonstop, that is also an invitation for burnout to rear its ugly head. And here's why. Think about, um, you know, it almost makes me think about a car engine revving its motor, where if you're looking at it, you know, it's like you're trying to get the rev the engine higher and higher. Like for me using success because as a projector, right, like I'm always chasing success. And sometimes I have to kind of like really like focus on it. It's take, you know, like finding it holding it there, keeping my, you know, my speed steady there. And so that kind of revs the engine pretty high sometimes, right? But eventually you're going to burn, you're going to run out of gas. You're going to run out of fuel if you don't take care of yourself and like get back into neutral or slow down and rest, right? And so we chase and we chase and we chase And no matter what you're chasing, whether it's your vision or your dream or your heart's true desire, If you're always in that energy of like trying to find that success or that satisfaction or that surprise or that peace, even if it's a good thing that you're chasing, you know, you're still chasing it, right? You're still revving that engine trying to get there. And that's a guaranteed recipe for burnout in the long run. My new perspective on this, I guess, is that your signature and your not self are signs, they're guideposts along your journey, but they're not necessarily an end state. Neutrality is the desired end state where you have sprinkles of your signature and sprinkles of your not self scattered along your journey that guide you along the way. But the best way to be persistent and to stay consistent and to protect your energy in the long run is find that cruise control And that neutrality in terms of what you're doing and how you're doing it and how you're taking action. And that is how you can use your human design signature, not self and type to avoid burnout is focusing on that neutrality. And when you notice signs of your signature, you notice signs of your not self that is saying, hey, if you keep going down this path too hard, like if you keep just revving that engine in either direction, that is potentially going to take you down a road of burnout. So just be mindful of it, right? Or make some changes and try to get yourself back in that more neutral uh, cruise control type energy. What can you do to avoid burnout, right? I've talked about it from a human design lens, but like, what can you actually do? So I think it's really important to lean into the energy, to the design of your will center, your heart center, also known as your heart center and your root center. You have to learn, and I learned this as a, actually growing up as an athlete, as a swimmer, like you need to learn to control the controllables and do your best to release everything else. Recognize what your design is, do your best to create an environment where you can operate in your design and release everything else. And then above and beyond that, Wherever you're undefined, experiment with the transits and see when they create definition in your design so you can take advantage of that consistency, commitment, and work ethic that you might be clearing. If you are defined, you already have that energy consistently, so it's a matter of just trusting yourself and sometimes staying in your own lane so that you don't get caught up in what's happening in your external environment. So those are kind of the three steps, right? Like just understand your design, lean into it. Remember to control the controllables and try to let everything else go as best you can. And then if once you have that down, then you can start 
maybe playing with the transits for which of those two centers you have undefined. All right. So if aligning your business and your marketing strategy to your human design is something that's calling to you, you can take the first steps forward in my new free workshop series, Human Design, Marketing Strategy, and Business Alignment. This workshop series lays the foundation for creating and implementing an effective marketing strategy using your human design, one that aligns with your unique energy so you can continue to build, grow, and scale your purpose-driven business with less force, less frustration, and less burnout. You can find the link below in the episode description. And if you like or resonate with what you heard today, make sure you share this episode with your business besties, tagging me at Bree Couric and leaving me a five-star review on your favorite podcast platform. In the next episode of the Frequency and Flow podcast, I'm going to be discussing your human design centers and how you can use them to build and grow your business as an entrepreneur. So I'll see you there.